hopefully uh, you got some good, uh, good nuggets out of that film. Um, one of the key things I think about it are, or is the call to action at the end, right? When, we, when people see this film, we want them to start having conversations. Um, a lot of the times when we show this film, we're showing it to state level, local, lo local level elected officials, and people in communities. And on all three of those levels, there are things that you can do, and there are hopefully examples in this film of things that you could see that might be able to, might be able to do locally, right? But we have with us here uh, Watauga County Commissioner Charlie Wallen, and we have the star of the film over here, <laughs> Liz Whiteman, who uh, directs the High Country Food Hub, and I really appreciate y'all being here. Um, do y'all want to just start out by talking a little bit first, um, how do you see food insecurity and, and the local food system in Watauga County? What, what is your vision of, of how that is currently in, um, in this county now? Should I start? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so first of all, that film was really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. allowing us the opportunity to see it here. Um, so my immediate reflection on food insecurity in this county is that we know that food insecurity is high, that 20% of children in this county are food insecure. And the thing that really strikes me is we know that transportation is a huge issue. We have the farms here, we have the outlets for people to access local food, but our county is rural, it's remote, it can be really difficult for people to actually get to these places. Um, it also struck me in the film, this was filmed about a year ago, mm -hmm. and how much has changed at the High Country Food Hub since then. We were talking about access and being able to shop online, but the reality was that people still had to come to downtown Boone during business hours, fight traffic, pick up their kids, somehow get there and pick up their food. In the past year, we've started a satellite pickup program. So we now have, Sam, six? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six locations um, around Watauga County and in Avery and uh, Ash County as well that allow people to more naturally access local food. Um, they can go to the library and pick up the books that they have on hold and pick up their food. So I really think we've we've made some strides and we still have a long way to go. Yeah, and that's one one goal that we have with this film is we're gonna do a follow-up in a few years to really see how things have changed in the interim. What um, We wanted to focus on what people are doing about the issue, not just the issue. And we'd also like to see what have those things accomplished in that amount of time. So we'll definitely be back. Hopefully they'll have us back um, <laughs> to, to follow up on that at some point. But uh, Commissioner, now, now you, you had a tie-in with the Food Hub and, and what the commissioners did there, but uh, what else um, as county commissioners are you folks doing? Well, I, I actually have multiple interactions with the Food Hub over the years. I uh, work at Appalachian by day, and that's my, my daytime job, so I'm uh, the interim director of campus dining right now. So we've, we've worked for the Food Hub during the pandemic. I would get a call from maybe some people in the room being, <laughs> we need this, we need that. And it's like, at one point in time, it's like, we need shelves. And I was like, well, we've got shelves we're not using. So we loaded them up on the truck and took them over there. Uh, they, were, they would come to the commissioners and be like, we need another cooler, we need another freezer. We would try to find the money to give it to them. We, uh, anytime that we've been able to help get money to them, so that they can be successful, we've done it. And to see what it has grown to, we just all had a pipe dream that it would get to where it's at today. And if we could be a small part of doing that, that would be wonderful. Uh, we, back to the food insecurity, uh, working on campus, it can fluctuate anywhere from 45 to 49% of the students on campus are food insecure from time to time. You'll hear some people try to say it's lower around 30, but it's more closer to 50% of the, of the students are food insecure. So it, not only in the community, the younger children, you've got, you've got college age students who are hungry and then you've got the older folks who, who are hungry as well. So it, it's a problem that, go, that, that echoes through this whole county. And people look at this county and they look at this beautiful building and look at everything around and they're thinking, this, there's not a problem here. This county can, can be upwards of 29% of the poverty level and 29% of the people here are suffering so it you know anything that we can do to help them you know we try to do that as commissioners and go out of our way I could talk on and on and on on about this this is one of my passions is food and food for the community and I grew up here in the mountains of Western North Carolina and have lived here in Boone 32 years and I grew up in rural North Carolina and you know having farms were just so important to my family and 
for everyone. And the local school systems here too, they, they, were, they were doing some of the things you saw at Wake County. They were, they were sending food out, they were delivering it on buses to try to make sure that all those kids would have a meal while they were away from school. And it's sad, uh, you know, the article just came out yesterday you know, locally, but we had already seen that they were shutting down the uh, the federal assistance to have free meals for everyone, and and that's that, that's going to be hurtful for a lot of our kids in this area. We got so many kids that I mean, literally a penny keeps them from not being able to get some of the advantages that others, and we have just too many to be able to qualify for free for everybody. So it it that's going to be it's going to be a really bigger need now especially for some of these kids cuz they're not going they're going to go back to not having that meal that they were getting consistently at school well and i, I will say i was talking to commissioner wallen before the film um and he was talking about um how different counties and different areas seeing things that are happening in other areas have sparked ideas and a lot of these things have spread so even things that you've seen in the film people have seen these ideas replicated them in other areas so so far, it's been a really interesting and fun thing. Mm -hmm. I know several people have, several, in several locations, the, the High Country Food Hub has been a very popular uh, discussion topic, and I'll send them all your way. I don't know how many of them actually call you guys, but um, lots of people get ideas from that. So hopefully, um, hopefully it's been, it's had a positive impact. So mm -hmm. now it's time for you guys to interject yourselves into the conversation. What, what did you see in the film? What did you think of it? What questions do you have? Um, you have a. What was the impact of the COVID pandemic on <coughs> security in this county? You want to start? You can start. I will. I, I think it. We rallied as a community. I, I think there was opportunities to provide for people. I mean, the free meals, the delivering. I think we reached out to more people. And it made people more aware of the people that were insecure. And I think maybe we actually got more food to them than they probably had ever seen before, which was a good thing. Um, I know the food hub just, I mean, it exploded. I mean, it just exploded rapidly of what they were able to provide. And people, it was a trusting, to see the trust that people had to go to them because they knew they could trust where that food was coming from. It was local, it was right here. They didn't have to worry about it. They were, especially when the pandemic started, you heard, all the fears were out there of, you know, I don't wanna get food from here, I don't wanna get food from there. But then they were lining up, I mean, literally lining up for blocks to get food for hours, I mean, when at the food hub. And it was just, and I was one of them. I would be in line getting my box uh, every day. And I have a CSA with a local farmer, that's where all of our meats come, so. You know, I don't just talk about it. I, I try to act it every day too in my lifestyle. So it's just, I, I think it was just incredible to bring even more awareness. And I think we've done even more and, I, and it's continued even as the pandemic has kind of mm -hmm. drifted a little bit out of sight. Yeah, and for the High Country Food Hub, the impact was kind of twofold. So as Charlie mentioned, mm -hmm. it are like customers exploded. Um, we often talk about now that we don't really remember the year of 2020 just because we were like working late nights, we were there early mornings, every day there was a new problem and a new solution. So we kind of see like a little bit of a silver lining of the supply chain issues that happened that a lot of people were turned on to local food and they're still really excited about it. Uh, we also operate a Double Up Food Bucks program so if you use your SNAP card at our farmer's markets or at the High Country Food Hub, we'll double it. So if you your bill is $50, you put $25 on your card and we contribute the other $25, which is a huge impact in the community. And with COVID, we saw more people than ever before on food stamps. So we used to have a $20 limit for matching and we made that unlimited. Uh, we still have an unlimited match, so we've seen the utilization of that program just go through the roof and see that like people who are using federal nutrition benefits can feed more of, more of the meals for their family locally with high quality protein and produce, and we think that's really important. And I think it's really, it's really great that access is becoming one of the, the focus points for food insecurity. It's not just about the fact that someone may not have the means to get there or the, the money to buy the food is that they might not actually be able to access it 
Uh, you heard there are several counties in the eastern part of the state that only have one grocery store. There are people driving 45 minutes one way to get fresh food. That's a tough thing to do and to keep fresh food on the table, especially with with now currently fuel prices being so high, right? That, that's even another even another hurdle. Um, I saw a hand back there. Yeah, well, Liz, can you talk about where that money comes from that the supplements that? Absolutely. That, that, that other half? Yeah, um, Rachel's looking at me to see if I remember. Um, so the money from that is largely um, funded from a number of different places, but uh, individual donors, if you shop on the High Country Food Hub, you can add a five or 10 or $25 donation to your cart. Uh, the town of Boone is also a really big donor for that. They fund us every year. Um, and there are a lot of church groups and different organizations. Um, the Moravian Ministries just recently gave us some money to fund this. So it's all um, grant funds. There's some federal funds that go into it as well. Um, but it all comes largely within the community. And we have seen an impact last year Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but we doubled ninety-five thousand uh, dollars. That was the total. So we doubled around forty-seven thousand dollars. And in the life of the program, uh, we have calculated that about two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars has stayed in this community instead of going to big box stores or other places where people would be shopping. That's great. I'm just a hand up here. Yes, ma'am. So I'm wondering. Uh, can Avery County people access this food hub as well? Absolutely. So we actually have a pickup location in Banner Elk. Um, it is next to the Painted Fish at the Wynn office in Avery County. Okay. Uh, so the way that that works is that you shop online, as I mentioned in the film, Thursday at noon until Monday at midnight. And when you go to shop, you can choose Banner Elk as your pickup location. And how do how do you get the word out to Avery County residents since it seems to be mostly Wakoga mm -hmm. that knows about the food hub? So we just sent out about, Sam, how many postcards? I got, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> 11,000 postcards, so check your mailbox. You might have gotten something from us. Um, the Banner Elk pickup location is less than a year old, so we're still trying to figure out how to get the word out. Um, we would love to hear ideas if there are like groups that you're, you're involved in, ideas that you have, we're, we're working on it. Um, Dave, did you want to add something? Uh, we're hoping to have additional sites in Avery County within the next year. Um, and we'd love to come and talk to your church group or your um, any kind of group and tell them more about Food Hub and about Food Hub. So yes. we started a group called GAPS, which is giving at potlucks. Mm -hmm. in Avery County and we give to only Avery County charities and if we were to include you could we be somehow assured that the money that was raised in Avery County would then go to Avery County residents our development director is nodding yes to me <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, yeah I think so and it sounds like that would be a great opportunity and we'd be happy to talk to you after this about it as well okay. thank you Yes, sir. Is there enough of um, a defined organizational structure at a higher level? I've, I've been with Habitat for Humanity and Shadow in Orange County for 30 years, mm -hmm. and I know one of the things that we're able to do is to send some of our executive directors, et cetera, to regional annual meetings where there's some sort of best practices. So it's, it's easy to pick up those things that are working somewhere and, and adopt it for yourself. Is there anything like that yet, or is this too new in the scheme of things for the, for the food security? Specifically for food security, no, but um, our association that, that, um, that I work for and that he's a part of, uh, we have an annual meeting every year, and we have regional meetings all, you know, all throughout the year. Um, and so as county commissioners, we are trying to spread this word. Since we already have a network in place in that way, we're trying to spread this word about this topic and others um, through doing these types of projects. And are you getting uh, good buy-in from mm -hmm. the commissioners from the two hundred counties? Oh yes, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. Yes, sir. yes. And back to what we were sharing earlier about, I, I said on that panel that was that we were talking about earlier that our former president put together to study this, and 
I was sitting there listening to all the different ideas, and I was like thinking, wow, why don't we deliver somewhere? That would be so great to deliver somewhere. I come back, I was like, do you know they're delivering? Yeah, we're already getting ready to start that. And I'm like, oh, well, I should have known they've already thought of that. I thought, man, this is a great idea. We should jump on this. And they were already thinking of it and already figuring out how to put it into practice. So. Yeah, but they might not have been. So it was good. It was something good that I thought, you know, hey, here's something that I learned. I did learn. I, I shared earlier. I learned when I was sitting on that committee that I thought, oh, everybody does this. Everybody's got like a great functioning organization like we do. And all of us partner together and we work together and we're sharing and we're not trying to over duplicate. And then I hear other counties, one didn't have it or there's all this fighting amongst all these other other departments. And I'm like, this just doesn't make any sense to me because I'm living in this county that we're all working together and it just blew my mind to hear that so it was really eye-opening not only from me learning but also learning you know the challenges and being able to share the challenges we've overcome and how much farther ahead we are than a lot of other counties so and, and one of the reasons that if you'll see in the movie that we went all over the state I mean there mm -hmm. are interviews from all over the place and the reason for that is because everyone is doing something different. They, ha they all have their own ideas. If we can kind of cross-pollinate those all across mm -hmm. the state and get the good ideas to move throughout the state using the network of county commissioners that we have from all 100 counties, then we, we consider that a win for everybody. It, it seems great that those schools made all those school buses available. Mm -hmm. Because that's a big mm -hmm. gift, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. program. Yeah. Okay. And I will say it's interesting, just the way that you know, thought processes go, like there's always a way to make something happen, right? The McDowell County part that you saw, they're using the public transportation vans. Well, the way they get their funding is by having a rider get on and get off. Every time a rider gets on the bus and gets off the bus, they get paid for it. They don't get paid for the driver to just drive around. So they had to have a volunteer ride and take the meals out of the bus, set it on the doorstep and get back on. But they, they still got their funding because they had a rider and they were able to deliver the meals. So it was things like that are just really interesting. She's had her hand up a couple times right there. Yeah, yes. Kudos to um, the Women's Room and Agriculture. Yeah. Just the little bit that I've been involved volunteering, I'm continuously amazed by the programs that you are putting in place and growing. It's, it's really, um, it's encouraging and affirming and it's a positive story. <laughs> we need more of those. And I couldn't help but think the same thing as I watched the film and also um, this discussion. I mean, this sounds like there's a lot of best practices. And I love your concept of um, creating, you know, connecting from the local to the regional and sharing those ideas. And I actually think that COVID has enabled us to feel more trusting of technology to meet virtually, to <coughs> learn new skills to meet virtually and share ideas. And um, I was wondering if you'd even thought even about, I mean, I come from technology, I think about white papers, right? And many white papers are marketing, but there's also technical substance to them, like how to. Just a little bit of the, this is what we do, and here's a little bit of how to. Um, have you been able to distill down any of that knowledge that you've been amassing and share it with your peers? Mm -hmm. So not just at the county commissioner level, but a number of the people that we saw in the film <clears throat> that are boots on the ground, as we say. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we have thought about it. Um, over the past two years, we have gotten a lot of phone calls and emails from people who've heard about the Food Hub, who are interested in it. Um, and a lot of times the questions were questions that I couldn't necessarily answer. I've been at my job for about two and a half years now. So the concepts and the reasons behind the way the Food Hub evolved predated me. So uh, we actually made a film that is a bit of an oral history of the Food Hub um, and tries to distill the origin story and goes into the way that we function so that we can share that with folks when they come knocking because like our vision of success in the future is that every county and every community has the opportunity to build something like this that fits their community. Uh, we're also a part of a food hub network statewide. It's convened by resourceful communities, and that's been a really wonderful space for us to be able to, as you said, connect and collaborate, uh, talk with people down east who have 
issues and challenges on a totally different scale where they're dealing with people who have hundreds of acres and we're, we're dealing with farmers who have maybe, you know, five to ten acres. Can I have a follow-up? Absolutely. <laughs> um, you mentioned the future, and mm -hmm. that was another thought I had in my mind. Um, I am old enough to remember the generation. Um, my great-grandfather uh, that grew up in the Depression, and, you know, they moved out of uh, cities to mm -hmm. the country, and that's how they survived farming. And it goes back to, in my mind, the thought of, you know, victory gardens and individual resilience. And um, that, that mm -hmm. adage, you know, you, you give a man a fish, he eats for one mm -hmm. day, and you teach a man to fish, and he can support himself off. And I guess I was wondering how you see the future being able to empower um, individual families to even just, for example, distribute seeds. Mm -hmm. and extend the education program, it's not just about nutrition and how to cook healthy, but also how to grow and supplement their, their own household budgets mm -hmm. or whole household nutrition with some of their own food. Yeah, good question. Um, so Blue Ridge Women in Agriculture is the nonprofit that's an umbrella over the High Country Food Hub, the King Street Market, the Boone Winter Farmers Market. Um, and then also the Blue Ridge Craft Program, which is actually a farmer training and mentorship program. So we have a staff person who focuses on developing trainings um, and spaces where farmers who are established can share their knowledge and act as mentors for people who, as you said, might be interested in eventually being a market farmer or maybe just homesteading, being able to feed their families. Like the knowledge is here in our community and we really feel like it's our, our job to make those connections and make sure that, yeah, there is a generation that, that follows. And, and to piggyback on that, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities in the community. There's a lot of farmers who are willing to, to have people there. Uh, on campus, we have actually have a 250-acre farm over in Ashe County that's a living, breathing, teaching uh, facility, and uh, there's there's classes held out there, and there's a lot of students who just go out there and volunteer because they just want to learn how to grow food, and that you know that always warms my heart that there's people that just want to learn how to grow food, and and they're going out there, and and the gentlemen that run it, they're they 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 love to have people come out there. They love to teach people how to how to farm and how to just grow whatever it is they might want to learn. And uh, I had that growing up. I, I share, I, I do a presentation on campus and I always love to share that when I first came to school here, I was like, my roommate was from from the, from the uh, from a city and he goes, he put rings home this can of green beans. And I'm like, where'd you get that? He said the grocery store. And I was like, they sell canned vegetables in the grocery store? I'd always went to the cellar, I'd went to the freezer, you know, got it from wherever. I, I didn't even realize you sold vegetables when I first came to school here in the grocery store and I thought it was like the, I was like that's the craziest thing in the world I, I would never want to have that so uh, I want other people to experience that and experience being never having gr grabbed a can off the shelf and they've grown it in their cellar or wherever um, I, I know your focus obviously is on farming and, and that type of distribution but I've often heard and I think you all have heard the statistic that if we could just stop wasting our food in this country we would have more than enough to feed everybody. And, and I've often thought about what happens with, you know, the restaurants that are in the area or somebody who's got perishable foods. Is, is there a way to tap into that market to get involved with distribution or is that really like a parallel operation that you're doing? I can, I can speak to that some. I, uh, the Hunger Coalition here in town, they go around and pick up food from all the different, any restaurant, grocery store that'll give them food, they'll give it. Um, twenty about twenty years ago, we uh, started a partnership on campus with them. Uh, a friend of mine who I actually got involved with was a local farmer. Had done a lot of stuff. He was working at the uh, he was working at the Hunger Coalition, and he said uh, he's like, I hear you're looking for a new avenue to get rid of your leftover foods. And we we're like, I was like, yeah. He's like, you won't have to deliver it. We'll come pick it up. And so it just started. And now they have this huge truck that travels all over the county. They'll even go over into Tennessee. They pick up all this stuff and bring it back. And you saw in the film a couple of places where that where they packaged food and 
families that, that are needy can come. That's what you get to do over at the food at the food hub. You come in and and they shop for you, and, and it's all there. We give them all of our food. They package it up, freeze it, and they make box meals out of it. So it there is already something of that that already going and working in in this in this area. And, and that's mostly grassroots. It yeah. happens in, in, you know, localities. There's not, you know, there's not a uniform way that that happens over the state for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's also an organization called Farm Cafe mm -hmm. in Boone and they have their Farm Full Circle program and they go to restaurants and grocery stores mm -hmm. and get donated produce that's about to go bad or meat. Mm -hmm. and then they make meals out of it and they sell them at the cafe and through the food hub, but they also donate a lot to food mm -hmm. pantries in the area. So there's a way to reduce that waste, but it's just, there's multiple organizations mm -hmm. that are overlapping, but there's still need, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The part of the film that warmed my heart the most was the little lady that was digging her hands in the big crate of green beans, yeah. <laughs> and how excited she looked to have those green beans, you know? And that, to me, evoked these memories of older folks around here that I know, that would, like, I'd sit on the porch with them shucking, uh, you know, or stringing bushels of green beans, and they'd tell stories and everything. And how we've become so disconnected from that. Because before I moved up here, I was that kid that only knew you got vegetables from the grocery store and not that you actually <laughs> grew these things on a farm. You know, I thought there were three types of apples. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The Food Lion has cards that you can pick up and it says for every card you pick up and give the cashier, they'll donate $5. How does that work? Where does that money, how does that work? You, you I'm, not sure program. Program. I'm not sure about that specific program. I'm not sure about their sure specific about program either. either. I'll have to ask them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love mm -hmm. to hear about it. I, I've seen, I know what you're talking about, but I, I'm yeah. not quite sure where, where it's going. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you made a comment about um, that in the schools, I think, that there are, we have children that are too many children, so we can't get free food for all. Yeah, there, right there is, um, there's like a threshold of where, like in Wilkes, Wilkes County, Ash County, Allegheny, some of the other counties, if a certain number of kids at the poverty level, it, it trips, uh, there's a certain percentage, like if it's like 75%, don't hold me to that, I can't remember the percentage right offhand, you know, qualify for free or reduced meals, then everybody in the county gets it. And we're, we are just above that to where we can't qualify for that program to where everyone in the county can, can get the free or reduced you know meal option like that we can in the like other counties can because they get they get to do that for a hundred percent of their kids whereas we can't so so it's all or nothing do what is it all or nothing like well i mean there's still reduced meals and there's still some other programs there but mm -hmm. to get the whole free the free program like in wilkes county and some of the surrounding counties we just don't have enough to, to qualify we're just above it so you, you mentioned a lot of uh, numbers and, and percents from you know statewide, Dogga County, mm -hmm. App State students, children, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, so I have a two-part question. One is, so there must be a very precise way to measure food insecurity. What is the measure? How do you know one kid's food insecure and the next one isn't? And, and the follow-up question is, do you feel that, that that measure is accurate or does it undercount or overcount food insecurity? Depends on who you ask and when, if you ask me. Because that's why, again, see 48 to 49% versus some will say it's as low as 30% for like just on campus. And there's always, you know, what qualifies. There, there, I don't, unless y'all know of something, there's a the, more qualifying. It can be all over the board at yeah, times. The numbers that we use um, mm -hmm. or that we reference are from Feeding America. Mm -hmm. And they, um, I, I believe their threshold is. It's something to the effect of not having at least one meal that contains fresh food on a daily basis. Something like something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head, but if you look at the at the Feeding America website, you can get data for your local area, for your state, for the country, and they'll they'll have all of that listed there um, as to how they measure. But it is different for for different um, organizations. I don't have a better answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think from their perspective, if you don't have one meal that has fresh food in it every day, if you're eating packaged food or canned food or um, nothing but sweets, you know, inexpensive foods all the time or on a daily basis, then they would consider you food insecure. Oh, let me get the one in the back really fast and then we'll come back, back up here. Yeah.
stand up so I can see. But um, and like the food house is an amazing, creative example of how to make food accessible. But I just wonder if like you all have any desire to like participate in the like traditional market, um, like the bigger grocery stores that are open late every single day to sure. people who like you know want to shop them. Or and that might not be a goal at all. It's not even on the radar. But I'm sure yeah, that's a great question that I've never been in asked before. What's um, the question? She, she basically wants to know if they want to participate in the more traditional kind of markets like grocery stores that are open more hours and later. Yeah. So the problem with a lot of those outlets is that it can be really difficult for farmers to actually get have their their produce qualified to be sold. Um, we have worked with the university and with other organizations in town that require a type of certification that's called GAP certification. They can just be extremely burdensome for small family farmers like on the scale that we're dealing with here. Uh, we do have some great examples in Boone. Earth Fair has some local produce. A new uh, community market, Wildwood, just opened on Howard Street, just a couple blocks away from us, really close to campus, they're carrying a lot of produce from the same farms that sell through us. Um, so we kind of see our lane being an alternative to the tr traditional grocery stores, um, but definitely know that for some farms and some different types of producers that could qualify to have their produce and their products in more traditional sources, that that ultimately does really help access for the community. Okay, and then I have like kind of it's on the same subject, but um, it might just be a stigma or something that I've seen and like this one off like, oh my gosh, local food's way more expensive <laughs> than me going to Food Line or Walmart. So is there like and that's what I was thinking of too, if, as the food have participating in the traditional markets and you know like simple supply and demand. Mm -hmm. like, local food's gonna be like more expensive. But I just yeah, that part of the question. Yeah, I think that's a very common assumption that is sometimes true and sometimes not true. Um, we at the Food Hub have an, a different model where farmers actually set the price. So we kind of see it as a balance and we try to talk to farmers about setting a price that makes sure that they are covering the cost of all of the inputs for seeds, for fertilizer, for labor so that ultimately they're not losing money. Um, because a lot of times when we see carrots for a dollar a pound at the grocery store, that's not the true price of them, um, which doesn't help with access, unfortunately, when the prices are fair to one person, they're out of reach for another person. Um, but we, we, see, we haven't seen the incre increases in the price of food that I've personally seen at the grocery store. Um, I know there are some people in this room who are avid local food consumers, and I'm not sure if that holds true across the board, but that has been my mm -hmm. personal experience. I, I agree with that. I haven't seen the jump like you've seen everywhere else in the grocery stores. I think the price has stayed consistent for, for a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Um, and one, one thing I'll say, too, is that we saw this when we were interviewing during COVID, um, supply chain issues caused a lot of problems with getting access to food. So local food systems keep those supply chain issues from being a problem when you get into situations like we had in COVID. Um, did you have your hand? I, I just have a follow up to that, um, which has opened up the Pandora's box. Um, there's an ethical component too. I like to shop local and support farmers because I know they're getting paid a living wage Walmart, Publix, Food Lion, these big box grocery stores are going for the cheapest food they can find. You're not getting the quality or the nutrition from it. The soils may be depleted. Um, most of the garlic in the United States comes from China. I don't trust China with my food, garlic or otherwise. Um, so when I shop, there's also that ethical thing that I, I don't want my food to be an oppressive situation for the farmer or you know the grower is the one who takes the hit so i just think that's an important component to mm -hmm. yes if i could just follow up on that because i was going to sort of make the same point and um, i'm involved at the food hub in different ways but as a consumer at the food hub 
when I buy something and pay a little more for it, it lasts a lot longer in my refrigerator mm -hmm. um, than what I would have bought at the grocery store. So I think when you look at the cost, you also have to look at how much of it did mm -hmm. I end up throwing away if I didn't you know, eat it quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the point you make, the farmers are getting paid <coughs> way more, you know, 80% plus you know, of that dollar you're spending is going back to those farmers here locally. So I think, you know, and it's not being transported mm -hmm. thousands of miles. So you're also cutting out that piece of the food system, um, you know, when you're buying it in this method. And somebody um, mentioned um, when the money stays local, it amplifies itself. And I don't understand all the economics of that, but I, I know it's true and it's really important too to keep your money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you get to shake the hand that feeds you. That's like a good term the farmer's markets have, right? You get to form a relationship with the people that are raising your food. Some of my best friends, like, grow the salad greens that I eat, like, all the time, right? And so it's nice knowing it's like, oh, I don't get to see them as much, but I still, they're part of my every day, right, of that routine. And then it's like, you think about not why is the local food so expensive, but why is this corporate industrial food so cheap? Mm -hmm. Right. And what are the economies of scale that they're working on where you can have a dairy farm with 10,000 cows and these cesspools and they're like all these things that are going on, but the local dairy can't support themselves. Right. So then it's like, how are eggs, you know, a dollar twenty five for a dozen eggs? But what condition are those chickens being raised in? Right. When you think about how expensive feed is for the animals and all that stuff. So it's just like there's economies of scale that are going on and incredible amount of uh, government subsidies towards industrial agriculture, right? There are 46,000 farms in North Carolina now. Mm -hmm. How many of those receive government subsidies on the same scale as like a Tyson or a Purdue? And you heard Farmer Brown mm -hmm. in the film talk about that specific thing that, you know, USDA, he doesn't want them to stop supporting what they already support. He's just asking for some of that same kind of assistance for smaller farmers, just like the ones mm -hmm. that produce for the high country food homes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Consumers don't always like can't make that ethical choice, you know. So yeah. that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I'm going to eat salad, like I can afford to buy the food. Like I would just buy it from Walmart, and that's just. Yeah. And that, I know that's like a big question for everybody to think of, but that's why I try to keep on my radar too. Like people who want to eat healthy are going to go to Walmart for produce because they have. And I, and I promise not in the snotty way at all, but that's an education thing, right? Like yeah, no, yeah. what we're talking about here or is something that I don't think a lot of people hear. <laughs> but I think a segue to the thought that you have is that big industries are starting to hear what the consumer wants. So the marketing that's going on on a big scale is really towards local you know, they're incorporating a lot of the farming, the local farmers' produce into their displays. Uh, and they're being challenged, um, probably similar to the medical world being challenged with the alternative medical thinking world. And so that's, that's a good thing. It, even though we're um, a country based on capitalism, and even though, you know, big industry grew, I mean, when I was a kid, and that, that, that was enough years ago, <laughs> for sure, there were still small local stores. Where, and I was raised in a big area back in Connecticut. So it's like, you know, uh, but there were still little farm products and things like that. I think in the 50s, it really blew up to this big, hub this gigantic distribution thing so it really isn't that old i mean i, I don't want to date myself but i i don't i i don't think it's that old and i think it's great that these local uh these local attempts are going on to really bring people mentally back to the land in their own area so i i see nothing but good stuff really because of this i don't I don't want to think that the big guys are the big bad wolves, although we know they are on many levels. But um, they really are being, and their rear ends are being nipped at, I should say, by 
all this stuff that's coming up from grassroots up yeah. about eating well and wellness and just all these integrated concepts. So it's a good thing. But, uh, but I will say I get your point that if you only have a dollar fifty and you need to get lettuce and it costs a dollar fifty at one store, you're going to go where you can afford it. So mm -hmm. don't think that I don't get that point. But um, it's amazing how these conversations are lead. The questions are leading into each other. Our conversations are leading into each other. And there's larger systems at work, right, that lead us into food being an ethical situation. It's an economic situation. It's an environmental situation. So it's important that we all just try to, like, find a way that we can work better in our food system, support the environment and our local economies more, but then do it in a way that you can still support yourself, right? Because if you can't afford it, then there's larger questions. Why are wages higher, right? Why are these things all going on? But there's so much going on in the world. We're so grateful that places like Blue Ridge Women in Agriculture and our county commissioners and the state group of county commissioners are interested in this and pushing these conversations forward. Unfortunately, we're approaching our capacity here for this container, this room, this event, to um, engage in those conversations. And we're approaching time. So is there, uh, if y'all could just, you know, in the last couple minutes we have, uh, just tell us where we can learn more about the initiatives that are going on at the local, the county, and the state level. Well, and can I also ask, this is a good segue, I want to know where the movie, where the film goes from here. So who else is going to see it? So we've been we've been showing this all over the state at different at different locations and groups. You know about this size. Uh, we have local leaders, uh, local legislators at the state level, c county commissioners, things like that, who come to these events, mayors, um, and we're doing it this way through August. Uh, we're going to have a screening at our annual convention, our annual conference, which is going to be held in Cabarrus County. Uh, was that Concord? That's Concord. I have to say everything by county names. <laughs> Concord, North Carolina. So we're gonna have a large group there, about six to 800 people. We'll, view, we'll have a screening of the film there. And then the final event is at North Carolina A&T. Um, we're gonna have a lot of the agricultural, um, agricultural faculty staff uh, from the college involved in a large educational event there. Um, and in that time frame between the August and early September, it'll be released. Uh, we're gonna have it on Amazon. Prime Video, uh, YouTube, and Vimeo, um, and I can give you all the website where you can keep track of it uh, for when it's released. We don't have a date yet because Amazon Prime is making us wait around and go through the whole process. So hopefully we'll have that soon. Um, but if you go to theresiliencefilm.com, that's the website for the film. Um, and we hope that all of you who are here, when it comes out, will share it to as many people as you can because we want to get it out there. Um, everywhere we can, but I'll let you folks talk about where they can get more information. Well, I I want to right quick before we talk about that. Um, when we were talking about food and the uh, and the expense of of local food, I will say that all of the vegetables that I have in my garden right now I bought from the food hub. And you want to talk about something that is cheap? It, it undercuts any price that you see at any bigger place, Lowe's, any other place in this town. You can get plants like, I mean, really dirt cheap. I mean, no pun intended. And that's <laughs> everything in my garden came from the food hub, from my tomatoes, my squash, my zucchini, uh, my potato, everything, all the seeds or any of the plants all came from them. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, I didn't pay hardly anything for it. And I mean, and it was great. And I'm, and I'm helping support local farms mm -hmm. who are growing these seeds and then I'm putting it in and using it. So that is a way you can do it if you're, if maybe you, you want to have a way to give back and help the farmers out. Interesting. So you want to have any resources or anything? Sure. Uh, um, so we're online. Um, you can find Blue Ridge Women in Agriculture at BERWIA, and that's the acronym, .org. If you go there, you can see all of our programs that we talked about, the Blue Ridge Craft. Uh, that'll send you to the High Country Food Hub as well, the, our King Street Market. Uh, the High Country Food Hub operates year-round, so you can shop locally and buy vegetables that are grown in the High Country year-round. A lot of people don't think about that. Um, and if you are interested in getting more involved in, with us, we're always looking for volunteers on Wednesdays at our downtown Boone location. Uh, if you send me an email, my email is liz at Berwea. Um, and we have some cards in the back that don't have my email on them, but you'll get in touch with someone 
um, we can send you the information about signing up and volunteering and our volunteers are like the engine that makes the food hub work so uh, if you're interested and available we would really love to have you be involved. Mm -hmm.